After doing a poll over on my Instagram, and by the interest of my beautiful girlfriend Tristan, it looks like quite a few people want to know why we believe in Ouija boards. I found this topic interesting not only for the supernatural psychology aspect, but recently my son and I have jumped into horror movies with my girlfriend. Although I was largely a wuss when it came to spooky movies, my girlfriend's love for them has shown me that there's some fun in controlled fear. During this last week, my son and I binged watched all four Paranormal Activity movies with Tristan because they're some of her faves. In the first movie, when hoping to find out what this demon wants, one of the main characters, Mika, suggests trying a Ouija board. Katie, who this demon seems to be attached to, is immediately scared by Mika even suggesting this, and she makes him promise not to try it. But in a twist of words, Mika merely promises not to buy a Ouija board, but later he brings one home and justifies it by saying he kept his promise because he just borrowed it. This triggers a huge fight between Mika and Katie, and when they leave the house, we see the board move on its own and then catch fire. This is actually quite common too, and no, not the Ouija board moving because of a spirit and then catching fire, but people are legitimately afraid to use a Ouija board. In paranormal activity, they say it's dangerous because you're then inviting the demon in, or there's the concern that they might aggravate the demon. One of the reasons I love my girlfriend is because we have interesting conversations while critically thinking together. And although we're both huge skeptics, she was telling me how she would be reluctant to use a Ouija board. I found this really interesting. In a recent Supernatural Psychology video, I asked how many of you would live in a house where murders took place. And in the last video, I discussed how many of us atheists wouldn't sell our soul. So today, I thought it'd be interesting to dive into the supernatural psychology of Ouija boards because there's actually some science behind how they work. So before we get started, pause the video for a second and let me know down in the comments below if you would be brave enough to use a Ouija board. In order to understand how Ouija boards work, we need to discuss the psychological phenomenon called the idiomotor effect. And also, if you're new to the Rewired Soul, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Here, we practice critical thinking and skepticism to improve our emotional intelligence and overall well-being. In a hilarious episode of Bob's Burgers that took place in season five, Tina falls in love with a ghost named Jeff who she keeps in a shoebox. When Tammy, Jocelyn, Zeke, and Jimmy Jr. are skeptical of the existence of Jeff, Louise convinces them to use a Ouija board to communicate with Jeff. After Zeke asks Jeff what type of food ghosts eat, the Ouija board replies with S-O-U-P, and all the kids end up believing they actually communicated with this ghost named Jeff. Later, we find out that Louise was tricking the kids and was actually moving the planchette. And I assume that even most skeptics figure that when using the board with other people, someone must be moving it. But what's really interesting is that even if you use the board alone, it would move. To understand this, we need to explain the idiomotor effect. As Dr. Stephen Novella describes in his book, The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, he explains the idiomotor effect as involuntary, subtle muscle movement triggered by an expectation that creates the illusion that the movement was caused by an external force. The idiomotor effect is just another wacky part of our brain that many of us are completely unaware of. This explains many beliefs that date back to ancient times before we had the scientific progress that we have today. Even as recently as 1933, the British Society of Dowsers was founded. Dowsing is something you may have seen before where people take two rods and believe they can point you in the direction of water. You hold the two rods parallel and as you near water, supposedly the rods are supposed to cross. While sometimes a dowser will get lucky and stumble across water based on random chance, there's no scientific evidence that dowsing works in any scientific way. Dowsers also believe that this practice can find metal ores, gemstones, oil, and more, which would completely defy the laws of physics. Psychologist Ray Hyman has done quite a bit of research into the idiomotor effect to explain why this happens. Hyman says, quote, under a variety of circumstances, our muscles will behave unconsciously in accordance with an implanted expectation. What makes this simple fact so important is that we are not aware that we ourselves are the source of the resulting action. This lack of any sense of volition is common in many everyday actions. So this also helps explain why we believe 
Ouija boards actually work. Like Hyman states, this happens unconsciously in accordance with an implanted expectation. This is why a Ouija board planchette may move even if we're using the board alone. But when with friends, the board may have more power if multiple people have similar unconscious expectations. While this may help explain something like the board's yes or no questions, what about when the board actually spells out words? Well, think about it. Have you ever watched Wheel of Fortune or, or played a game of Hangman? Our brain is a prediction machine and is constantly trying to fill in gaps and guess what's coming. And this is especially true with words. As the planchette moves to a letter, the unconscious idiomotor effect kicks in and starts spelling out a word. Then we use post hoc reasoning to explain what this word means in relation to what we're asking or experiencing. So, now that we have a better understanding of the idiomotor effect, the question is, does it really matter if people believe in Ouija boards? Sometimes when I make these supernatural psychology videos, I wonder, Chris, are you just being a buzzkill? As many of you know, I hold firmly to the belief that if it's not hurting anyone, who cares? For example, even though I'm an atheist, if you're a believer, as long as you're not trying to harm people, do your thing. So, is it a big deal if you and your friends have a spooky night and use a Ouija board and think it's real? As long as you don't make any life-changing decisions that may have a negative impact, I'd say no. Or is it a big deal that my highly intelligent and rational girlfriend would be reluctant to use a Ouija board? Not really. I don't expect that topic ever being the catalyst for a fight in our relationship. Although I'd argue that in a majority of cases, it's no big deal whether or not people believe in Ouija boards, there are some concerns. For example, there's a booming industry of psychic mediums who manipulate people out of a lot of money by taking advantage of their belief in the supernatural. Some grieving people desperate to speak to a loved one who passed away may spend thousands of dollars trying to communicate with them. Others may spend tens of thousands of dollars in psychics trying to induce more control over their own lives. If your belief in the supernatural is hurting you psychologically or financially, I make these videos on critical thinking and skepticism for you. But what if I told you that this belief has actually led to hundreds of deaths? Currently, a man by the name of James McCormick is spending 10 years in prison for taking advantage of people's ignorance about the idiomotor effect. At first, McCormick started selling a golf ball finder using a similar framework as the Dowsers. But money is one of the most corruptive influences, so he eventually upgraded to saying that he had invented a device that can locate landmines. And he's thought to have made upwards of 50 million pounds from the sales of more than 7,000 of these fake devices. According to the BBC, one invoice showed sales of 38 million pounds over three years to Iraq. He also sold these bogus devices to countries such as Thailand, Georgia, Romania, and more. As a result, hundreds of people have died using his devices while searching for landmines. So, although Ouija boards are largely just for a spooky evening of fun, when we lack critical thinking skills and skepticism, our ignorance can have devastating results. Many of us won't be defrauded by a psychic or a guy selling fake bomb detection devices, but we need to look at the bigger picture. By being skeptical and practicing critical thinking, we're increasing our ability to pause and question what we're reading in the news or even gossip our friends are telling us. And when we educate ourselves about how the mind works, we can better understand some of its unconscious reactions, such as biases or the idiomotor effect. All right, everybody, thank you once again for making it all the way through this video essay. And yeah, I was excited to make it, like I said, over on Instagram. By the way, follow me over on Instagram, at The Rewired Soul, I'm on Twitter too. But anyways, I put up a poll because I love hearing from all of you, and a ton of you wanted me to cover this. And it's something that I've been thinking about doing for a while, so I hope you enjoyed it. And learning about the idiomotor effect, I hope that makes a little bit more sense why these Ouija boards work. And listen, like I said, I am constantly, constantly questioning myself. Like, I'm like, Chris, are you just, are you just being a wet blanket? Are you being an old wet blanket trying to discourage people from just having fun? No, I don't care. 
I don't care. Like, if you want to like have fun and do whatever and get spooky, that's cool. But like I said, like we're practicing honing our critical thinking skills and everything like that, you know, just to help us in other situations. We question things and say, hey, is there another possible explanation for this? Like just constantly when I look, you know, on social media, when I look at videos and to see all the arguments and everything like that, or recently I've been seeing a ton of conspiracy theories and stuff. Like, I'm just like, we need to become better thinkers, right? And by the way, I have a lot of videos planned, like diving into stuff. Um, I put up some other polls and I'm gonna do some of the other videos that you guys voted like second and third and things like that. So those will be coming soon. Make sure you follow me on social media. I've had some people say that they're not getting notifications and all that, but I always tweet or I put it up on my Instagram stories or whatever. So make sure you follow me over on social media. All right, but anyways, I uh, don't know if this uh, video is gonna be monetized. So if you wanna support the channel in any way, at the end, there's a link to pay Patreon, or if you're looking for therapy like I have been, well, I actually got therapy a long time ago. But anyways, I use BetterHelp Online Therapy. If you want to check it out, there's an affiliate link down below. It's affordable, it's online, so you can be indoors, social distancing, and working with an awesome therapist. And when you use my link, a little bit comes back to support the channel and the work that I do here. So check it out down in the description and the pinned comment below. And also, I always uh, link uh, the books that I recommend too. So if you want to check out the books from Stephen Novella, go check that out all right but anyways that's all i got for this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and a huge huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on patreon or getting my books at the rewiredsoul.com or signing up for you know better help or using my affiliate links all of you are just the most beautiful people ever all right thanks again for watching i'll see you next time